let me die. You're all going to burn. We're all going to die. You don't know what you're doing. If only Ahsoka knew how spot on Darth Maul was. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here to give you guys my review on Star Wars The Clone Wars Episode 10 of the final season. And if you guys haven't watched it yet, click away because I'm going to be talking about spoilers in this episode. But with that warning out of the way now, first off, this entire episode, I was just chills going down my spine with everything that was happening here and with what Darth Maul was saying, saying because everything he was saying was so true. Because why? Because we've already seen it happen and just throughout this episode just like last week's episode it just makes me cry with every scene that goes on in here knowing how all this is about to break down in such an awful way because let's face it order 66 when we saw it in theaters yes that tugged at our hearts but now seeing how we saw that and then there's star wars rebels and with ahsoka being the main focus of these last two episodes only tugged at the heart and breaks it even more. I forgot to mention, for one instance, was how Anakin Skywalker and, and Ahsoka's last meeting was. That scene right there, that was like showing us that this is the last time they're gonna meet, and through all of our heads, we were like saying, it's sad to know that this is the last time they're ever gonna meet, because the next time they meet, they are bitter enemies, as Anakin is now the Sith Lord Darth Vader, turned to the dark side. And then it's even and what's even more sadder with this episode is that she was literally yeah, literally warned about what was going to happen to Anakin. The sad thing is, she just didn't believe him, and that being Darth Maul himself. Because all throughout this episode, Darth Maul was showing that he knows what's coming, them being a Jedi, and like all Jedis out there, well... He's a Sith Lord, but y'all get my point. Dark Jedi, either way, like like Jedi's, he can see the future. And he saw a vision of Order 66 going down pretty soon. And the Jedi Order being destroyed and the Republic being gone. But not to mention, Darth City is coming to power. Of course, when he had that vision, while he did know that it was true, he wanted more information. But it's because he had that vision that he wanted Obi-Wan to come here and not Ahsoka, along with Anakin Skywalker, because he wanted to try to stop Order 66. Now, first off, guys, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Just because he wanted to stop it wasn't saying that was making him a hero or anything or turning to the side of the Jedi anymore. He just wanted to stop it for his own benefit. So this way, he could be able to have as much power as he could have, knowing that the galaxy's about to shift into a new era, our era of darkness with the Empire uh, up in the air there, taking control of everything. Oh, boy. And what's even sadder was that... <laughs> Or better yet, you know what? Let me hold on to that. And real quick, I'm going to talk about the fact that what I also loved about this episode was how they didn't they didn't just keep us all focused completely on this. Sure, the the percentage of this episode was all about Ahsoka and Darth Maul, Ahsoka versus Darth Maul, and everything. But they did, but they made sure to lead this episode to give us info on what's happening with the Mandalorians as well. Because as y'all know, Maul is now the ruler of Mandalore, and, and these Mandalorians who decided to follow him, well, they now have found out that that was their downfall. Because Botang, who didn't want to join, join for one, is because he wasn't traditionally a Mandalorian. But I'm sure deep down she knew that working with him and letting him rule over their people would be the end of them. And she was right. Unfortunately, her some of the other people didn't know and they and they found out too late to where they are now in trouble and about to be in more trouble than they know. But now that I put that out of the way, we gotta get back to Darth Maul here. But and first off, when he when he was trying to get Warren Ahsoka and everything, during that time, I was just being like saying to myself, Ahsoka, I wish you would listen to this guy because you don't know how right he is. Of course, it's also understandable why she wouldn't believe him. 
Because let's face it, when she, when he went on about Anakin and how Anakin was about to turn to the dark side, of course she wouldn't believe him after everything her and Anakin have been through. She wouldn't believe that was going to happen. But if there's one thing this scene all should show me is sometimes even if this guy may be your enemy or even if he's someone you hate, doesn't mean that sometimes they make points or they could be right about something. Because sometimes even your enemies will tell you the truth and hope that maybe you'll believe them so that way your life is safe. Not because they like you, but more, more on the line maybe because they respect you or they could see this as a chance to use you for something better in their, in their times of real need. Like manipulate you onto their side so it can benefit them. It could be always a lot of reasons for that. But I think even more so is that one of these things also reminded me of a character in DC Comics, and that's Damian Wayne. And I say that because I think back on Justice League versus Teen Titans when he told Starfire that she should have had more information or know more about Raven. And I remember looking in YouTube comic sessions and people were just bashing on Damian for all that. And yet there were some out there who were who were seeing what Damien was saying and thinking that they should listen to what he's saying because he, whether you like the kid or not, he makes a point about something. And that is just exactly how it is with this episode. Maul may, may be Ahsoka's enemy, but that does not mean he had a point or that maybe she should have listened to him. But I just wanted to throw that out there. And another thing I wanted to throw out was uh, Ahsoka and Obi-Wan's um, conversation. They It was right here where she learned that Count Dooku was dead and that Anakin is now trying to spy on the Supreme Chancellor. Of course, Ahsoka didn't like hearing that because she knew Anakin wouldn't like it. And once again, she expressed her dislikes and her, and her um, what's the best way to put it? Because I don't want to say hate. She could never hate the Jedi Council. It's more in the lie that her relationship with the Jedi Council is, uh, what's the best way to put it? Strain. Yeah, strain. And she shouldn't be the one to defend the council's decision. The thing is, Obi-Wan agreed with her because he was saying that the council isn't always right. And she... And that is very much so true because some of the decisions the council made is what led to Order 66 and the fall of the Jedi and everything. But now that I've said all that, though, we got to really get into what I really wanted to see in this episode or for these next three episodes going forward. And that was what I saw in the Jet and the Star Wars trailer for this season. And that was Darth Maul versus Ahsoka. This fight did not disappoint me. It made. It was just action-packed through and through. I love the animation and choreography of animation they did with that fight scene there. The lightsaber duel between those two was just awesome. And my favorite part of the scene would have to be when they were fighting up at the top. Right there in the spot where they barely had many, much um, foot foothold foothold yeah that's what i'm trying to say foothold and yeah but don't get me wrong i'm not surprised that they know how to do it they're jedi they're trained to be acrobatic and everything so of course they're able to handle it fine but still in fact seeing them be able to fight on that space where there's not much foothold and actually balance themselves well out and continue to fight like they are still on full high ground is something to see but the amazing part of it all came when Ahsoka showed how strong she had gotten that she was actually able to beat Darth Maul. But unlike Anakin, who killed Count Dooku, she tried to, to keep him alive to bring him to justice and everything. And that's where it led into what I showed y'all at my intro of the video. Telling she told he told her to just let him die because he felt he didn't like how he was going to see his faith going in now that Order 66 was about to go down very, very soon. Uh, all, everything about this episode just took my breath away, guys. And like I said, chills down my spine for every time that Darth Maul was trying to warn Ahsoka about everything that was about to come true and how he knew about it. Now, my guess is he kind of first had feelings and knew about it when Darth Sidious came to visit him back when he finally get, got control of Mandalore and everything. Because we never saw what happened to him after he was captured. 
All we knew is that Sidious wasn't going to kill him and that he could use him for something. And after having that vision, Darth Maul began to see everything, how he was a pawn and Darth Sidious' plan all along, along with Count Dooku, Anakin, everyone in the galaxy. And now it's about to all boil down come next episode. Because if I'm a betting man, the next episode, that is where Order 66 is going to happen. And this is where we'll see how not only how only Ahsoka survives, but how Rex was in a, didn't follow through with it. We'll, we'll know, did he take it out when it was being given to him? Or did, or did he already take it out? And what will this do to Mandalorian, the Mandalorians and Mandalore? Because Order 66, they're really just going after the Jedi. But is that to say they won't they won't hesitate to kill anyone who steps who gets in their way? Because I would believe they wouldn't they wouldn't bother with her killing anyone who gets in their way of them trying to get to Ahsoka. Oh, the possibilities are endless here, guys. All I just know is this is nuts. And next episode, the last two episodes are going to be uh, a sit-down watch where you won't be able to move from your seat. You're just going to be have your, your eyes glued to the screen. But I'm going to leave it all at that for now, guys. And hey, if you're enjoying my videos, all you got to do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Mega Geek Mixer, signing out. Bye.